Hey guys, welcome to the Django REST Framework tutorial series. As part of this video, we are going to discuss about routers. And uh, as we know that routers are very important when you are going to deal with the view sets, right? The REST Framework adds supports for the automatic URL routing to the Django. And coming to the point here, what are the types of routers? types of routers is like uh, generally the routers is as a sub module which is available in the rest framework under that we have the two important classes one is a simple router another one is a default router what is a simple router simple router which contains the like list create retrieve update partial update and destroy functions and uh, default router also contains the same thing but that there is only one difference is like uh, default API root view and most importantly hyperlinks to the all the list views see when you are displaying the all the list of data then obviously you see the hyperlink on that so when you use a default router I will show you practically how the difference it is okay so just remember here there is only two important routers simple router default router these are available on the rest framework routers and simple router is like list create retrieve update partial update and same thing here also but the difference is only like hyperlinks okay let's go and see the simple example then we'll get some idea let's walk through the django rest framework documentation here you see that routers as i mentioned earlier simple router default router and if you want to use the routers like we need to use from rest framework import routers and we need to create an object then we need to register the which are the view sets we have it so the registering is nothing but oh, the view sets like multiple view sets we create we need to register and add that urls to the router and if you scroll down the same uh, web page and we'll get some more interesting things see this is one way of uh, adding the urls right you see that there is a router object we are creating registers and normally we'll uh, there is a urls.py in that we have the urls but you can add routers.urls like this so router will contains all the urls those urls you can add otherwise you can do one thing you take this url pattern same as it is and you include routers.urls that is also fine okay either we need to include this or else we can go for the directly uh, adding the plus is equal to this there are two ways we can add the routers right and also one more important thing is that if you want to specify the uh, the app name we can specify in include function and also we can specify the namespace as well if you want to specify it is also like django specific it is not like related to the rest framework but we can specify it right and if you can scroll down uh, the same thing uh, like different uh, view sets how we can use it these are the functions get post put dash delete will be there for both the things even default router also and the hyperlink is going to be added even if we can uh, use the trialing is equal to false trialing slash is equal to false argument okay so it will trialing the slashes on the url routes can be removed by setting this one when you say that uh, is equal to false and also we can create uh, our own routers customized routers you take any class here uh, the class is uh, extending this uh, simple router and that can be done you remember here there is a route and dynamic route simple router and if you want to create your own routers as of now we have seen that only two routers right if you want to implement your own router we can use the this is the way okay like class and uh, you can extend that router class itself okay so in previous session we already discussed about default router when you give the default router here so basically you see that uh, we imported the default router from the routers and we created an object and we added the register uh, register the uh, view set that after that we are adding the urls router dot urls because router is actually a object here dot urls we are appending to the url patterns as simple as when you go and check the uh, functionality like uh, how it works in the user interface level when you use the default router we see the hyperlink here if i go and click this 
and you see the all the list of the products the basically this api root comes when you are using the default router even there is a statement here default basic root v of uh, default router this is the statement of basically you see when it comes to the uh, default router so what we can do right we are going to this hyperlink is also there this is extra only for it comes for the uh, default router so what i'm going to do right i'm going to change this one to the simple router so let me go to the views and uh, so not in the views urls right let me go to the urls so instead of simple rotor, I will add, uh, sorry, instead of uh, using the default rotor, I will add the simple rotor. And you take the simple rotor, you can create an object for this, and the rest are the same. So let the server get started. And after that, we'll go to the uh, browser. And you refresh, when you refresh, this API root won't show, because um, that's how it is, okay? API root won't show at all. API root only comes, okay? Hyperlinks comes only when it comes to the default route something like this okay so that is the difference between the default rotor and uh, simple rotor and that's where like we are seeing at the coding level as well you just add simple rotor and one more thing that some of the projects they will do this entire code they will i mean they in the sense like developers so most of the times developers keep this uh, entire code into the separate uh, uh, .py file name called the routers.py so we can also add the code in that and uh, uh, include them into the URL patterns. So that is also we can do it, right? So let me know if you have any questions on this and I will definitely help you. So let's discuss about the pagination concept as well. The pagination concept is, uh, uh, it's an important when you have so much of uh, data which you want to list out and show it onto the for each page 10 records 20 records 30 records something like this if you want to visualize that we can go for the pagination okay so let's look into these some of the interesting topics under the pagination in rest framework so if you want to setting the pagination style in the django rest framework there are two ways we can do it one is a global level settings another one is the view level settings so the global level settings is like if you have to go to the settings.py and you can add the code the code which you are seeing on my screen and you remember here there is a pagination type this pagination type is like it depends on the which uh, pagination class you are using it those classes i will explain you into the upcoming uh, slide and you see that there is a pagination underscore class this is you can mention into the views right the first one is in the settings.py and the next one is in the views uh, i mean the particular views which view you are using is it models uh, model view set are like is it like generic views so in the particular view we can use this pagination underscore class this is nothing but uh, attribute for that class it's a class variable we can mention it so let's look into the what are the pagination types are there and uh, basically the pagination types here these are the types types of pagination classes the first one is rest framework pagination and base pagination so rest frameworks is actually main module under that pagination under that base pagination is a class this class is actually having the three subclasses now uh, now you can see this limit offset pagination page number pagination the another one is a cursor pagination so these are the three different paginations we are seeing on screen right and uh, we'll see that how to use this so as i said like we can use the settings.py and views.py uh, to, to uh, applicable these pagenations okay so we'll do the coding and we'll get some idea so how to proceed on it let's walk through the pagination in the django rest framework documentation you see that setting pagination style modifying it and these are the three api references like page number pagination limit offset cursor and also we can create our own paginations and we can control that a lot of things are there okay so, but if you want to do it very easiest way to set the pagination style in your project and uh, you can go to the, it, it is applicable for the, all the pages if you want to try this, okay. For example, if I go on rest framework default pagination class and I'm going to the my project. So in the project, go to the settings, okay. So uh, yeah, here it is the settings is there and just you can uh, scroll down and uh, here we can add this piece of code right 
So once we added the piece of code and what we are going to do, right? So here size is very big. I'm going to add only two uh, page size. For each page, there is a two records which are adding and there is a limit offset pagination which I'm using it. We'll see that what is the limit of offset pagination. So let me go on faster. And uh, so what we can do, right? Enter this uh, view sets and you see that there is actually like a, uh, for each page there is a two records two and three and also like uh, did you observe it or not here the product view set and limit is equal to two and offset is equal to two okay so limit you remember limit means how many records you want into the each page that is a limit if i go to the second page limit is the same only limit is equal to two, but offset is increased to four right and if i go to this third page and the limit is equal to but offset is increased to six and if I go to the four, and obviously that is the last page, there is no next. So basically what we are seeing here, next, it is talking about the next page, right? So limit is equal to two and offset is equal to two and the next page like four. So for the next page, these are the four. Uh, so offset is nothing but range, like how many um, uh, data which is already there till the three. Like if we want to move to the next fourth page, already six records are already prepared in this case right so now count is eight and you see that 14 15 so previous link if you want to click the previous link also we can click here so this is one of the uses of pagination so we can use it directly in the um, your uh, rest framework if you don't want to use the list paginations we can use the uh, different classes for example uh, if we go to the documentation we get a lot of ideas about it okay so there are other things like page number pagination so if you want to use and you will get only page is equal to five page is equal to three if you want to use page number pagination okay so what i will do right i'm going to copy this code See, same thing. It's globally we are setting. Again, I am going to tell you, this is a globally we are setting this data. So that is how we are looking into now. And but if you don't want globally, you want specific to the view. Also, we can do it. Okay. So let me go to the here and uh, if I go and enter, it won't show anything. Uh, okay. One second. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm going to the like um, here, I don't want limit wise to see just enter and you see that uh, this is a page wise previously there is a limit right now only the page is equal to three and that's how it is we are able to see it this is a page page wise page numbers wise okay so if you see the name here also page number pagination so previous one is like uh, uh, limit offset pagination so we have the limit and offset so here are only like page number paginations so we can use it something like this Similarly, we have other pagination techniques. Okay, so cursor pagination and as well. But if you look at the document, which is very straightforward. Okay, for example, you want to apply the paginations for the specific to the uh, the view. But that time, what we can do, right? We need to implement like this. We need to use the get paginated response, and also like uh, we have to specify the uh, like uh, what is the class we are using, like pagination class. So those things we need to refer uh, and uh, but anyway I'm going to use this one into the upcoming sessions we'll get more idea because I'm giving the very basic ideas of the each and every concept at this moment going forward we'll explore more onto the each and every concept in advanced okay so hope um, this you understand it and let me know if you have any questions and we'll see and upcoming sessions we talk about nested serializers and also we are going to discuss about uh, some of the important concepts like uh, uh, parsers and also we are going to talk about different serializer fields so many things is going to be uh, i already planned it so we can discuss in detail about it <laughs>